Hello everyone, it's Nick from Homebrewery Gaming. And I'm James from Homebrewery Gaming. And we are here to share with you a Q&A with questions from yours truly, you guys. So um, starting things off, I think um, I'd just like to say that I'm happy that I have James here today because I know he isn't in every single one of my videos, but obviously that's because we're very busy people. But um, I thought for this video it felt more appropriate if both of us were in it so we could each give our own input on uh, each of the questions. Yeah. So starting off at number one, we have what was the first card game that you ever made? Okay, so um, the first card game that at least I've ever made, well no, actually, if we're thinking like really far back, James and I have known each other for a very long time, and do you remember that one thing we had in elementary school? What we did is we would take lined paper cards and we would draw a monster on it. Mm -hmm. Then we would assign a random attack and a random defense number, and we would bring them to lunch, slap them down, and make up rules as it goes, which mm -hmm. monster is going to beat who. And usually it was whoever won the argument, because there's a lot of arguments when we played. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, that guy looks cooler, so he should win. Or that guy's bigger, so he should win. Well, my monster has spikes on his back, and your monster didn't take the spikes off of it yet. <laughs> That's true. It was very, it was very um, interesting, to say the least, but it kept us very entertained. Um, in regards to, like, more official, uh, the first card game that, like, James and I ever really made together, in terms of homebrew gaming, I have a binder here which has a lot of our older stuff in it yeah here we go um it's not going to show up right here i might just flip the image but um basically it's just called fortuna the trading card game and the way how it would work is um you just have these creatures stuff like that we don't own the artwork nope. i assure you i'll flip this as well but they had like strength dexterity intelligence you'd roll some dice uh damage would be dealt you get experience stuff like that and we'd rolled with this idea for a very long time the only year thing, and a half. yeah and the only thing was that like it just got a little too complicated and and it was a little bit too much like magic yeah and like we were like the win goal and stuff like that just took too long so we decided to go with something simpler like clash yeah how does it feel to be selling our game clash on clashington I would say it feels really nice, just because um, it took a long time to set everything up, like the website and everything, but now that I have it set up, like now that we have set up together, like people can access it whenever they want. Yeah. Um, you could print the cards, you could try it on Tabletop Simulator, it's just nice because it's basically working with itself now. It feels pretty good, and there's a project that Nick and I have been working on for almost two and a half years now. Yeah, I, I know like the, uh, the channel itself is like just over a year now. But um, yeah, we worked on it like six months or even like a year before then. Before yeah, we we've been rolling started. with it for a little while. Uh -huh. It's an understatement too. Are there any YouTubers that inspire you to make videos? Now, this doesn't apply to me as much, but I do have a lot of YouTubers that I follow um, that contribute to my lust for card games and card game creation. Mm -hmm. Not even uh, TCG creators, but Yu-Gi-Oh! Magic the Gathering YouTubers that I really love to pay attention to mm. for the competitive scene. But this question more applies to you, so how about you take yeah. that? Um, YouTubers have inspired me to start making? It's kind of weird, because like, I feel like YouTubers have inspired me to continue making. But like, there really I, weren't any that made you start, right? Yeah, it was weird, because it's like, we started it, and then I started to realize that there's a community online, and like, ever since I've been in that community, like, been helping out with some little things here and there, like, people have been giving me input. Um, I'd say moreover, it's just like I've been getting inspiration to continue doing the hobby along with my own inspiration, myself inspiration to do the hobby as well. But like, I'd say in terms of starting it, it was more so just we started it and we just worked from there. Do you play slash collect any of the big TCGs? And if so, which ones? That's a question for James right there. Yeah, well, I actually, I competitively play Yu-Gi-Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, I dabble with Magic. I've been playing Magic for almost 10 years now. I've played Pokemon, but I don't really do it anymore. And the second part to that question is, what is your favorite Clash on Clashington card? Nick, what's your favorite Clash on Clashington card? Our favorite? Yeah. It's, it'd be our it's favorite. definitely the spirit. It's Dirt Speaker. Dirt Speaker. And I know that sounds like a weird one. Like, I know a lot of people would expect, like, oh, it's probably, like, the biggest and strongest with, like, the most complex art. But, um, to be honest, it's just, um, that card we haven't had to touch no. ever since we created it. We made it, and it's been good. It kind of set the ba it set the bounds for what our card design looks like. Mm -hmm. And like very it, simple. It wasn't even the first card ever made. Like no. even like the more original cards and the cards that came later. Like a lot of them needed changes, but this one, it's just the only time we ever had to change it is when it was like we had to make a change to the template or something where every card was. Affected. Really, I do artwork wise. My favorite would be uh, the D Magic Man. 
not only because I uh, did the art myself, you but did. it's just a cool looking guy. Artwork wise for me, I would say, I would say mainly probably just Von Guzer, just cause like he was one of the last cards that I've made for at least the first set I should say. And um, I did the whole video on him and it was just nice because um, not only do I like the artwork of him, but it's also just due to the fact that um, when I saw the process, like when you see the process sped up in the video that we made, it's just cool to see like how it all gets put together. And even like myself who created it, like you, you start to realize like, oh, that's how it was made. Like that's how I made it. And it's just like nice to see how it was made. All right, Nick, how many ladies have you attracted with that beard? At least one. <laughs> It's the best question I could say. One guaranteed, I know that for a fact. <laughs> On to the next question now. Where did the inspiration come from for Clash and what is your favorite card slash board game? So for the first part of that question, um, I would say our inspiration it came from just uh, the card games we've like made even like in elementary school. Yeah. Trying to go back to Just that. having these monsters beating the, each other up mm -hmm. over a fight. And it was also just to the fact that like I wanted to expand on it because it's something that we've that James and I have been doing for such a long time now, and with our artistic talents, um, like Photoshop expertise, I guess you could say, and whatnot, it's just um, it was just something we wanted to make, something we wanted to share, so like we could not only just like get our names out there, but just so people can like see what the games are like and sharing the fun in a way, I guess you could say. And it's a really nice hobby too. I mean, mm -hmm. we're currently in the middle of working on the second set, and we do have a lot of cool stuff. We're just really on the bounds of being so excited to show everybody that's true we're also a little hunkered down with like um school, school just let out yeah that's we true. just finished school yesterday he has one more final but <laughs> yeah but um hopefully we'll start getting kicked back into things soon um what's what our favorite, favorite board game dnd dnd &D. uh it's card more game of a tabletop but like still i'd apply it as yeah. a board game my favorite board game would easily be dungeon dragons any type of uh role-playing rpg and then my favorite card game, I play Yu-Gi-Oh! a lot. Yeah, James so. is obsessed with Yu-Gi-Oh! I, I used to play it a little, but like nowadays where it's so like, it's much more complicated, much more in-depth than it's he stupid, knows that but stuff I love it. than I do. I saw it uh, have birth and I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch it die, <laughs> man. I'm gonna live that game through its death. Um, some other card games I like though, um, Boss Monster. Really, Boss Monster is a lot of fun. I got the new sets the other day. Mm -hmm. And that's actually a game that inspires me. Mm -hmm. to uh to build and work on stuff it's quirky as opposed to like just a typical run-of-the-mill like magic Yu-Gi-Oh, pokemon and in terms of those big games i still play a little magic so a couple like, other games we've been getting into uh, ascension star realms yeah star dominion. realms is cool i want to play dominion more of those deck building games where like you don't really start off with your own deck per se but you customize it as you play yeah uh settlers of Catan is another one i want to try out <laughs> more of a resource game but um I'd be interested in it. What has influenced your art style the most? And this is a two-parter. Uh, and do you guys have any new games in the works? The first part of that question, I would say what's influenced my art style is just, we've always been so accustomed to draw cartoony kind of things that I felt like, um, I've drawn like more complex things, but just in the terms of making clash and like the kind of deadlines that I set for myself, the simplistic art style, the cartoony art style worked well for us just because we were able to get a lot of content made, but fast. at the same time <laughs> fast and but at the same time it still has its own little style to it where people can enjoy it. Like they look at the art and they're like, oh, that's nice. It's not like, oh my gosh, it's amazing, but it it's looks- It's simplistic and has an appeal that anybody exactly. can enjoy. Now for myself, I, I don't want to brag and I don't mean to, but I've actually been drawing since I was three, four years old. That's true. Um, that's you haven't true. even actually seen uh, most of my art and what I can do, but I mm -hmm. do like to keep a simplistic cartoon style. Mm -hmm. And maybe uh, in one of our future games, I'll be able to expand and show off a little bit, show off. Yeah. And do you guys have any new games in the works? Um, like I said, we have Clash Set 2, and we have like one or two other ideas that we've been generating, but um, just due to time restraints. We're not sure if we'll be able to like kickstart an entirely new game soon as much as we'd love to. Like I feel the inspiration all the time. Yeah. I constantly write down notes. I go on the websites like boardgamegeek.com to like where I suggest like ideas for mechanics and see what uh, people think of them. But yeah, it's just um, Clash was a big one for us just because because we worked on a ton of our card game ideas before, like this game right here, Fortuna, for example. But um, with Clash, it was just it was simple, it was quick, it was fun, it was addicting. And it, it's really it is addicting. It gives mm -hmm. us time. We go, hey, how about that? How about that idea? I have three different projects. One of them I spent a lot of time on, and one that I'm hoping to maybe get started on soon. I put a lot of time into it, but hopefully, with the help of Nick and with a little bit less time due to school, uh, more time to do my hobbies, I'll be able to 
hopefully expand on them. This is the kind of thing that really like makes us happy. We enjoy working on this kind of stuff because it's a little thing we can do on the side. Yeah, I have um, a notebook filled with ideas. Yes, that is so true. Are people buying your game regularly? I would say I buy most of my own product as it turns to like sell it to other people that I know like that are closer to me. But I, we do have like a few small sales. That's not like anything ridiculous to be honest. It's just a few. And like we mentioned earlier, uh, or we may have not, this is mostly a hobby for us. We're yeah. we're really not in it to make money, it's not but we do want to put our names out there a little bit and we want to have fun and we want to enjoy it. Yes, and that's what's like most important to us to say the least. It's a hobby mm -hmm. in the end. And what was your biggest motivation for making your TCG? It's a question. Um, yeah, this question was like a little bit similar to some of the other stuff, or at least the answer is going to be similar, I should say. Um, the biggest motivation is just um, something that we've always enjoyed doing, something that has motivated us and I don't know I like the whole idea of making like these worlds and these creatures and stuff that also have like their own little boundaries to them like they have their own rules and mechanics to them so it's like obviously like in in contradiction to like what we used to make where we just draw the creatures like oh this guy's just more powerful at least now like we have mechanics and stuff and like very stable guidelines for where like yeah you could see how powerful this creature is or like how powerful this thing is in this world and really it's fun, especially when you see other people play the game and talk about it. It just feels amazing in a way because it's kind of like a story or like how people could write a story and like people talk about the story or like make a film and talk about the film. It's its own kind of like hobby and art form. It's a way of expressing yourself. Exactly. <laughs> and for the last question, are you thinking about making more characters, Nick? We have, oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, we, we really can't say too much right now, but we easily have 150, maybe more than that, card mm -hmm. ideas floating around. Mm -hmm. Not all make it into the second set, but that's for the third set. Maybe the fourth set. Maybe. Maybe. I'll be honest with you, like, I still haven't felt, like, burnt out about, like, making no. card games and stuff. And even when I do, it's, like, temporary, and I kick back up from it soon enough just like because... Like a little break, is... a hiatus. Like, exactly. Like, we just had a two, three-month hiatus from the game. Exactly. And now we're getting back into it. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty excited to see that. But, um, anywho, I hope you guys enjoyed this q and I hope you guys enjoyed all of our answers and our input. Hopefully it helps you guys if you make your own card games or just like hearing this kind of stuff. Um, be sure to check out our website or anything like that. Links are in the description below. Any last but, thoughts? Um, any last thoughts? Dirt speaker. Keep on clashing. Keep on clashing too. <laughs>